Induction Machines, Equivalent Circuit, and Maximum Breakdown Torque. This is going to be a three-part video. Problem states, a three-phase induction motor rated for 60 hertz and 460 volts has four poles and a synchronous speed of 1,800 RPMs. Use the circuit parameters below to answer each example. 1.7 ohm state of resistance, 7.3 ohm total stator and referred rotor leakage reactants, 1.12 ohm magnetizing reactants, 1.04 ohm rotor resistance referred to the stator, and 1.2 kilo ohm core loss resistance. Part one of this video, we're gonna answer example number one and two. Example one says calculate the breakdown slip of the motor. Example number two says calculate the referred rotor current during maximum torque conditions. In part number two of this video, we're gonna answer examples number three, four, and five. Example number three says determine the rotor speed at breakdown. Example four says solve for the per phase and the total rotor air gap kilowatts at breakdown. Example number five says solve for the total per phase and total output power in kilowatts at breakdown. And then finally, part three, the last part of this video, we're gonna answer example number six that says solve for the per phase and total torque in newton meters developed at breakdown. And we're gonna do that with all four of the torque formulas in the reference handbook. Ready to get started? Let's go. So to solve example number one that says calculate the breakdown slip of the motor, first let's identify what each of these motor circuit parameters are. So first over here, I have a really simple single line diagram. I like to draw these out for any kind of motor generator or transformer problem. It just helps me visualize the basic ratings of the machine. So we know that this is a three phase, 460 volt rated motor with a synchronous speed of 1800 RPMs and a total of four poles. Over here on the center of your screen, I've got the approximate motor single phase equivalent circuit. This is on page 55 of the NCES reference handbook under the header 422 equivalent circuits and characteristics. So starting here on the top left, 1.7 ohm stator resistance. This is going to be R1. Next, 7.3 ohm total stator and referred rotor leakage reactants. This is gonna be the sum of X1, the stator leakage reactants, and X2, the referred rotor leakage reactants. Next, 112 ohm magnetizing reactants. This is X of M in the parallel core branch. And over here on the right, 1.04 ohm rotor resistance referred to the stator. This is going to be R2. And last, 1.2 kilo ohm core loss resistance. This is RC for the core loss resistance, also in the parallel magnetizing branch of this circuit. All right, let's go ahead and locate where each of these parameters are on the equivalent circuit. So first off here in the center, this is the parallel core magnetizing branch. This resistor is R sub C, our core loss resistance. To the right of it, this is J X of M, the magnetizing leakage reactants. Next in the series loop over here, this is R1, the stator resistance. This is J X of one, the stator leakage reactants. This is J X of two, the referred rotor leakage reactants referred to the stator side of the circuit. And last down here, this is the rotor slip resistance. This is going to be R2, which is the rotor resistance referred to the stator, divided by S, the slip of the motor. Last, over here on the left, this is going to be V1, the voltage applied to the motor. Now be careful here, this is a three phase motor, which means the rated voltage 460 volts, this is line voltage. Since this is a single phase equivalent circuit, all of the values in this circuit are line to neutral. That means V1, the voltage applied across the motor terminals in our equivalent motor, single phase equivalent circuit, is going to be the line voltage, 460 volts, divided by the square root of three to get the line to neutral value. 
All right, let's go ahead and fill in the values of the remaining circuit parameters given to us in the problem before we start to work this problem. R1 is 1.7 ohms. The sum of X1 and X2, both of the leakage reactances, that's 7.3 ohms. Be careful here. The reactances are X, but our circuit uses impedance values, so it's up to us to remember to multiply any reactances by the imaginary operator J. So the sum of these two is given to us in the problem as J 7.3 ohms. How do we know this value is the sum of both? Well, instead of saying the stator leakage reactance is this and the referred rotor leakage reactance is this, they're telling us that the total stator and referred rotor leakage reactance is 7.3 ohms. In other words, the total amount of leakage reactants in the circuit, since they're in series, we can sum them up, is 7.3 ohms. Down here in the middle, magnetizing reactants, J, X of M, is going to be 112 ohms. Again, it's up to us to multiply by J to convert it to a complex impedance. And the core loss resistance is 1.2 kilo ohms. Last, our rotor resistance, refer to the stator, capital R2, is 1.04 ohms divided by S, our slip. All right, now that we have all of that sorted out, let's go ahead and solve for the breakdown slip of the motor or the value of the slip of the motor when it's temporarily at the point of breakdown. So to calculate the breakdown slip of this motor, we're going to use the formula on page 57 of the reference handbook located under the section 424 electrical machine theory that says R2 over S max T equals the square root of R1 squared plus the square of the sum of X1 and X2. Now all max T means is maximum torque. By definition, breakdown occurs at the point along the motor torque versus speed curve. It's gonna be the highest spot on that curve as the motor moves from a standstill of n equals to zero as n approaches its rated speed. In other words, S max T is the same thing as the slip at breakdown. Two different variables, they mean the same thing. All right, where does this formula come from? Breakdown or maximum torque occurs, again, at a brief moment in time, and we can define that as the time when our rotor slip resistance, R2 over S, equals the magnitude of this entire complex impedance. So I'm gonna say R1 plus Jx of one plus Jx of two, I'm just gonna say that equals complex Z. As the value of slip changes, remember the value of slip is gonna change as the motor progresses from a standstill, n equals to zero, all the way through that torque for speed curve until n equals its rated motor speed. As S, the slip changes, the exact moment when that motor is producing its maximum torque value, this ratio, R2 over S, will equal the magnitude of this complex impedance. And that's exactly what this formula in the reference handbook is telling us. Now, where does the square root come from? If you're familiar with how to convert between a complex number in rectangular and a complex number in polar form, you might already recognize this as the Pythagorean theorem solving for the hypotenuse or the magnitude of a complex number. In other words, magnitude Z, the magnitude of this total series complex impedance, that's equal to the square root of the square of the total real component plus the square of the total imaginary component. So this whole square root is really just the magnitude of this complex impedance, the series impedance before leading up to the rotor slip resistance. All right, since we're solving for the breakdown slip of this motor, we're really solving for S maximum torque or S at breakdown or breakdown slip. So we're gonna set this whole equation equal to S max T right here, and we're gonna solve. So plugging in the values from the circuit, S maximum torque, when we set this formula equal to it, is gonna be equal to R2 over Z. 
R2, the rotor resistance, referred to the stator. That's 1.04 ohms. Magnitude Z, that's going to be the magnitude of R1, 1.7 ohms, plus JX1 plus JX2, which is plus J7.3 ohms. Now there's a couple different ways we can calculate the magnitude of Z. We can do it the long way by following this formula. We can say the square root of 1.7 squared plus 7.3 squared, which gives us a magnitude of about 7.5 ohms, or we can let our calculator do the heavy lifting for us. I can press second complex menu, I can go down to magnitude, and I can type in the complex number 1.7 plus J7.3 ohms, just like I have written it down here. That's gonna tell the calculator, hey, take the magnitude of this complex number down here. And when you press enter, you're gonna get that same magnitude, about 7.5 ohms. So to solve for the breakdown slip of the motor or slip at maximum torque, I'm gonna to type in fraction sign 1.04. I'm gonna bring down that shorthand, take the magnitude of the complex impedance, and I'm gonna press enter. And that's gonna give us a breakdown slip of 0. 139 represented as a decimal, or we could also be asked to solve for it as a percentage, in which case to convert between a decimal and a percentage, all we have to do is either multiply by 100, like so, which gives us 13.9%, or we can take the decimal point and move it over not once, but two places giving us the same 13.9%. And that is the breakdown slip of this motor, which is the answer to example number one. Okay, example number two, calculate the referred rotor current during maximum torque conditions. So over here, looking at our motor circuit, the current flowing through this side of the circuit, I2 is the referred rotor current. We can solve for it using Ohm's law, using the rated slip of the motor. However, instead of the rated referred rotor current, we can solve for the referred rotor current at breakdown. I'm gonna call that I sub B, B for breakdown, or we could call it I max T for maximum torque. By, instead of using our rated slip, by plugging in the value of our slip at breakdown or what the handbook refers to as slip maximum torque. And that value, the slip at maximum torque, what we just solved for from example number one, we're gonna plug it in right here, 0 0.139 for our breakdown slip. All right, let's use Ohm's law to solve for the referred rotor current during maximum torque condition. Same thing as the referred rotor current at breakdown. So we're gonna use Ohm's law solved for current, which is I equals V over Z. This time, the I current that we're solving for is going to be our current at breakdown. All right, let's draw our fraction. If we wanna solve for the current flowing through this loop, we gotta sum up all these impedances and figure out the voltage from here to here. Luckily, we already know the line to neutral applied voltage. It's 460 volts over the square root of three. That's a V1. Notice that the voltage from here to here plus minus is equal to the voltage from here to here since they're in parallel. That means the voltage that we're gonna use in Ohm's law to solve for I sub B is going to be complex V1, the line to neutral applied motor voltage. Next, again, using Ohm's law, the impedance Z that we're gonna use is gonna be the sum of the stator resistance, the leakage reactance, and the rotor slip resistance at breakdown, using not the rated motor slip, but using the motor slip at breakdown. All right, from left to right, we've got R1 in series with plus J times x1 plus x2 plus r2 divided by the slip at breakdown. 
All right, let's fill in some numbers. For complex V1, let's start with the magnitude. The magnitude is going to be 460 volts divided by the square root of three. Next, we can use any angle we want for the voltage because a reference angle wasn't given to us in the problem. And we're really only solving for the magnitude, just the amps. But I'm gonna go ahead and make it easy on us and use a reference angle of zero degrees. Again, it doesn't matter. Any angle you use here, it'll change the angle of IB, but it won't change the magnitude. All right, down below, R1 is 1.7 ohms plus J times parentheses X1 plus X2. We know that's J7.3 plus 1.04 ohms divided by 0 0.139. All right, let's pull up our calculator and solve. In my calculator, I'm gonna press the fraction button, 460 divided by the square root of three on top. Move down below, 1.7 plus J, 7.3 ohms plus fraction button one more time, 1.04 ohms divided by, I'm gonna press second to save my spot, then I'm gonna scroll up and find the slip that we just solved for, 0 0.139, and press enter. That gives us a breakdown current of 22.6 amps at an angle of about negative 38 degrees. Since we used zero degrees for the reference angle for our voltage, this tells us that at breakdown, our current lags our voltage by 38 degrees. All right, final answer. All we're gonna do is take the magnitude of our breakdown current, which means the referred rotor current during maximum torque conditions is 22.6 amps. And that is the final answer for example number two. And that's it for part one of this video.